today we're going to be using White Lily All-Purpose Flour, baking powder, I got it laid out, a little cocoa, I do use Hershey's, we're going to be using some salt, one and a half sticks of butter, uh, three quarter cup of vegetable oil, an eight ounce, I mean a, a one fluid ounce of red food color and we got that, I'm going to go ahead and open it. Three eggs, vinegar, red food coloring, buttermilk, vegetable oil, cocoa, soda. Now, the first thing it says is in a large mixing bowl, uh, combine the flour, the cocoa, the baking powder, the soda, and the salt. So, we'll do that first. All right, so we're going to use two and a half cups of flour. I'm going to go ahead and put them in the sifter. Now, I'm not putting my cocoa in the sifter because it makes too big of a mess. And I don't want my sifter to have cocoa all over it. We'll just mix it up with a wire whisk, okay, later. All my homemade cakes use two and a half cups of flour, most of them. And so you get a lot of batter when you make my recipes. And we're going to sift the flour in the bowl. I'm going to get most of this prepped. And then I'll bring you all over here when we get to mix it in the mixer. All right, we've got three tablespoons of cocoa. One, two, three. You're going to use soda because you're using buttermilk. Most of the time, if you've got buttermilk in a recipe, whether it's a cake mix or, or your biscuits, you should use some soda. All right? So we're going to use a half a teaspoon. We're going to use... A half a teaspoon of salt and three teaspoons of baking powder. Baking powder. If you're joining us for the first time, this is Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. You know what? Back in the day, all the women cooked in the kitchen all day long because they had to cook breakfast, clean up, cook lunch, clean up, make supper, clean up. So now we go in the kitchen and spend an hour. We think we've done a lot, don't we? And they used to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. Use the stand mixer, add the butter and the sugar, mix it well, then add the eggs, add the vinegar, the oil, the red food coloring, and the buttermilk. We're going to go in that order. Then we're going to start adding dry ingredients a half a cup at a time, then add our vanilla. This is a half cup, so it's going to take four. One, two, three, four. about how full they are. Oh, that's pretty, ain't it? Pretty batter. It smells good, too. Now, some of y'all probably want to know why you use vinegar 
in a red velvet cake mix, can I say, because that's what you're supposed to do to make it taste like a red velvet cake. That's just the classic red velvet layer. You put that vinegar in there, you use a little bit of cocoa, and you use buttermilk. If you don't do those things, it don't taste like a classic red velvet. If you use a cake mix, it's good to add the vinegar to it, even if you get the red velvet one, just to make it taste more like a classic red velvet, okay? They're not burned, praise God. So what we're doing is we're going to toast a few pecans for our delicious red velvet cake, okay, that we made earlier. And we're going to ice it too. I'm going to show you what I can do in a day, just because I can. Throwing this together. Y'all ready? Butter. Now I'm quiet because I'm tired. I do get quiet if you wonder. I know some people think I talk too much. But I do get quiet when I get tired and I am tired. But you know what? I get to relax with my family once I get there, which is nice. how pretty those layers are and how straight they are. Those pans do a really good job, don't they? Look, y'all, we made this red velvet today. Start finish. I need me a bigger thing to get my ice out with. had a homemade red velvet cake, my homemade layers, in a while. I've been being lazy and using the cake mix, and I don't know why. You still got to get a, a lot of trouble. Why not just do it homemade, right? Now, this time, I put all the icing on the top. When I get to the top, I put it all up there. For the most part, every bit of it. layers 
It takes a little extra icing than if you've got three layers. And most people use two layers, which you definitely have enough icing for. But I like a tall, pretty, showy cake. So one reason I use eight inch layers is it just, it just makes it look so pretty, you know? Um, it really does. Makes a beautiful cake. Eight inch layers does. All right, now you need to make sure your icing gets to the bottom because we're going to put our pecans on the bottom. But I've always liked to swirl it. I don't know why, I just do. Okay, and I'm gonna comb the very top a little bit. Look, what did I do there? I'm gonna comb the very top a little bit and then we're gonna put our pecans on there. Here's a comb. And I'm just gonna comb it a little bit, just to make it pretty. Smells so good. If you've never toasted your pecans for your red velvet, oh, does it make it taste good, y'all. So you take your pecans and you go around the bottom. Let me show you how you sample it without cutting the cake. Oh, you can put a few pecans in the very middle of the top too. That's always pretty. Or just sprinkle some on the top. But toasting those pecans makes it so good, y'all. Well, let me show you how to taste it. You pick your thing up, you get you some icing on your spatula, you get some cake, this is what you call a cake pop, old fashioned way, and then you dip it in the pecans, look at, I got a cake pop on the stick. This is how we're going to end today. Eating a cake pop on a stick. Mmm! Oh, that's good. Mmm, that's so good. Did you know that cake pops are exactly that? They're cake crumbs. Really raw, like... Soft cake like this. Just like this. And then they mix it with icing. And then they dip it in chocolate. Or a vanilla or whatever it is you like yours dipped in. And then they coat it. That's a cake pop. Alright. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye y'all. Love ya.